things and the cross sectional areas. For the first one, we got um, two by two, which is uh, four inches square. And for the second one, we got uh, two inches square. And for the third one, we got also four inch square. Now, as you can see, the first one, the length is 12 inch, and then the, the two, second one is 24 inch, and the third one is 24 inch. Now, the low P of light is slowly increased, and we want to know which rods will fill the first and which one second, and do any of them fill at the same time. So, to solve, the, solve this problem, we will look at the crash sectional areas. The second rod will fill first because it got the smallest crash sectional area. As you can see, uh, one times two is uh, two inch square, which is less than the first one and then the third one. The first one and the third one will fill at the same time because they have the same cross sectional area. However, uh, what guarantees the fill is actually the stress, uh, which we write as sigma. So sigma is equal to the P divided by A, which is the force divided by the cross sectional areas. Now, you might wonder uh, what the length is doing here. Uh, length is important when we determine the elongations, uh, which should be, outcome in, should be in the upcoming videos. So the units of the stress is the SI units, and it's called Pascal's, which is PA, and it's Newton per meter squared. We have 10 to the third power of Pascal is written as KPA, which is uh, pure Pascal. We have 10 to the sixth Pascal is written as a uh, layer Pascal. We have 10 to the ninth Pascal is Giga Pascal, which is GPA. Now, for the US system, we have the stress is written in PSI, which is uh, pounds per inch squared. And we have a uh, 10 to the third PSI is called KSI. We have 10 to the sixth PSI is the MSI. Uh, just a quick uh, about idea about sign conversions. In size, let's say we have a two triangle uh, rectangle level. Rectangle 1 and rectangle 2 are exactly the same, and they got uh, P in the different directions. In studies, we'll say they are the same, because the sum in a force in the x direction is equal to 0. However, in the structural materials, for A, uh, if you think as a metal or some rubbish, if you hold it in the direction as shown, it will be, become longer, and that's actually the tensions. And for 2, as you can see, uh, sorry, the sign here is wrong, but this should be goes in and actually here, goes in there. Uh, it's getting shorter, and that's the uh, compressions. And you can write as the, for the tension is PDI by 8 is greater than 0, and for the compression, PDI by 8 is less than 0. So, what's the key idea here? The key idea here is if uh, actual stress is greater than the arrival stress, then this is bad because we must change the either the power, uh, the cross section area, or the materials. So, here we got an example problems. We're giving a uh, steel rod of radius R equals uh, 10 millimeters, and we're giving the arrival uh, stress sigma arrival equals uh, 165 megapascal. So, here's a uh, and we're asking what is the normal stress in the rod, and is that okay? And for B, we try to answer if the rod is made up of aluminum, uh, sigma arrival is 100 mm -hmm. past that, and is that okay? If not, what we should do? So for A, to solve this problem, we'll first look at the cross section areas. The cross section area in this case is uh, pi r squared, and like we talked about, we want the r to be in the units of meters. That's why it's 10 to the e to the 3 right here. Pi uh, times 10 e to the 3 uh, squared equals to 3.14 e to the 4 meters squared. To calculate normal stress, then we apply the P, which in this case is uh, 50. And kilonewtons might change to kilonewtons. That's right, it's 50 e to the 3 newtons divided by the cross sectional area we find above, 3.14 e to the 8 4 meters squared. And that gives 1.59 e to the 8 pascal, which is 159 megapascal. So, as you can see, 159 megapascal is less than the arrival stress we have, which is 165 megapascal. So, it is okay. For part B, if the rod is made of aluminum, the arrival stress is given as 100 megapascal, which is less than the actual stress, 159 megapascal that we have, so it is not okay. So what can we do then? We can either change the material it is made of, the load, or the cross sectional areas. Now, since the problem gives the rubber, uh, the aluminum, so we're not going to change the materials, and we're not going to change the force because it's giving the problem also, so the only thing we're going to change it is the cross sectional areas, which in this case we're going to change the radius of the rod. So we're giving the, so calculate the stress, which is P divided by 8, so P is what plug in, and pi r squared, and we plug the allowable stress in the right size. So after solving for the radius of the rod, we're giving the radius is equal to 12.63 e to an three meters, or 12.63 meters, and that is the radius that will make this okay. Hope that helps, and see you guys next time. Hello guys, now. Welcome to Home One Presentations. Uh, this is uh, me solving uh, three more problems on Home One. And just before we start it, I'm not very good at the computer uh, hands right now, so the rank can be like a sabi. Uh, just make sure you uh, follow me, and if you have questions, uh, leave in the comment section, please. So for the first problem we have is given two solid cylindrical throughout A, B, and B, C are put together at B, and noted as shown. The force P equals 40 kips, and we want to determine the average normal mass at the mixed section of A, uh, round AB and round BC, and we want to specify where it is a tension of compressions. So, the first thing you look at is uh, what we can do. You know, P is uh, 40 kips, so what we can do is we can solve for the flow of equilibrium. Now we know 40 goes this way and 60 goes this way. Therefore, based on status, the flow of equilibrium, we know the, there must be a 20 force going the same direction as P. So let's write that. We know that the force 
in the next direction. Each of equal to zero. Then we know negative 40 kips plus 30 kips plus 30 kips plus the power of BC is given to zero. Then we, based on this, we conclude that the power of BC is negative 20 kips. Now, negative 20, negative 40 minus 20, negative 60 plus 60 is equal to zero. So, what does negative 20 means? That means it is a compression. Because think about this, we have if the this go this way, it's not pulling the thing longer. The tension should pull this thing longer, so the tension goes this way. Which is, since we have the different directions, it's compression. And the negative in the front also index is a compression. So, the next step after this, what we're going to do is, we're going to cut the figure here in half. So, what we cut it is, we cut it uh, right here, where you see the force going into. So, the thing in the front, on the left, is going to be one section, and the thing on the right is going to be one section. So, uh, we're showing what I do here. You got uh, the rock right here. And we cut it right here, so it's going to be the end. And we got P going this way. And we know the diameter is given uh, two inches. And we're giving the length of that. So uh, let's say that's going to be a B right here. We know, based on this, the P of AB shows right here. Since this is going this way, it's 40. This here must be 40 times male. And as you see, as you can see, the, it's pulling apart and makes it longer. So it can set his attention. If it's going this way, then it's compressed. Now we know P is going to be equal to 40 kips tensions. Now, record the formula to solve for normal stress is equal to excuse me, uh, P divided by uh, A, which stands for cross area. We're given the P, which is PAB. We need to find the area, the cross area. So how do you do it? The how you do it is cross area is equal to uh, pi R squared. Well, now we write this is uh, pi D squared over 4, since we're given diameter in this case. So we can solve for that, uh, or the sections A and B, we're given pi. Diameter in this case is 2, so 2 squared, divided by 4. That's going to give us 3.1416 inch squared. Now we can already plug it into our P divided by 8. So we got uh, 40 kips tension, so it's positive. Uh, 3.1415 inch square. And then it's going to give us the answer of the stress of pot AB. So that's the answer is 12.73 KSI and tensions. Now, since we slide this uh, into the R part as well, so we got to do for the R part, this is also part of the questions. So what we have for R parts is figure like this. Sorry about that. Uh, and we got one right here. Oops. So, we know uh, there's uh, two 30 kips. Okay, if you guys don't remember, just uh, rewind the video, go back out, you can see it. Oh, we got uh, two 30 kips, goes in. And we know here's point C, here's point B. And we're giving the diameter here as the three inches. And remember, we got uh, tension this way. So, to counteract that force, we need the opposite, forcing the opposite directions. But also, they must be AB. So, this PAB is going to do this way, uh, which is PAB. And with what we saw, PAB is uh, 40 kips in tensions. And this is exactly what we do for the first step we do. So we know that what we saw already, so this is going to be uh, 20 kips in compressions. Therefore, we know the P already. The thing we need is the cross sectional area, which, if you know, is the same thing. So pi r squared, or we do uh, pi d squared divided by 4. In this case, it's pi 3 inches squared divided by 4, which uh, is going to give us 7.0686 inches squared. Now, to solve for the normal stress, we're just going to plug in. We got 20 gives. Uh, keep the negative to, to indicate the compression. Oh, you can just uh, write that hand. Right. Uh, compression and hand. Right. Compression. So we got uh, 7.0686 inches squared. To solve for that, we got 2.83 KSI in compressions. Uh, so that's it for the part. Question number one. Uh, stay tuned for number two. If you want to watch. And leave a uh, question in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks, guys. Hi guys, uh, let's click this video and we're going to continue to solve our problem 2. So, for problem 2, we're given two solid cylindrical rub A, B, and B, C are loaded together at B and loaded as shown. See right here. Knowing that the average normal stress must not exceed 140 megapascal in each rust, determine the smallest allowable diameter for each rust. So, as usual, we're going to start by doing the growth agreement. So, one moment. So, we're going to start by solving for the force. You guys can name, uh, you may find a joint, can name the sum of force in the x direction and the y direction. So here I'm going to do sum of force in the x direction, it's equal to zero. We know that, uh, the force right here, which I'm going to call reaction A, plus the 40, if you, uh, the answer is going to be right, uh, plus the 30 is equal to zero. Based on that, we can know that the reaction on A is equal to negative 70, uh, kilo newtons, or 70 in the up directions. And since we hear, uh, need to know the diameter, so this, uh, value, actually the sign does not matter very much in this case. So, we want to know the allowable diameters. 
What can we do? We have the formula, stress is equal to P divided by A. So obviously we need the cross sectional areas. And we know the cross sectional area is pi over squared. We can solve for R here and times by 2 to get the diameters. And this is exactly what I do. So we know R squared is equal to P divided by Q, uh, stress times pi, or sigma times pi. And now it's equal to the square root of that. And if we times by 2R, we get D. So looking at this, if we take a look at the part BCs, and we draw it right here. So this is part BC. B, C. Okay, we're going to look at it for step three. Then we know that the power, B, C, is need to come down with the uh, 30 kilonewtons. So uh, by summing up the force of X, we know that the P, B, P, C has to be equal to 30 kilonewtons in tension. So you can see it's pulling apart, not uh, going in this direction. Now we're given uh, the P, B, C. Now we can actually plug in some more. times 10 to the 3 newtons to convert the uh, unit to newtons, that's uh, very important here, and divide by the sigma, which is the level sigma is uh, 140 pascal, so it's 140 e to the 6 pascal, and times by. So after doing that, we get 0 0.008259 meters, and by times 2, we get 0 0.016518 meters, which the result is 16.5 meters. Now, we're going to look at the RDB. So I'll move out right here. Part DB is what the graph looks like. So we got the wall right here, uh, the rectangle, first one. And since we caught it out here, we're going to have a force of uh, 40 kilonewtons in this direction. And have the diameter one. Now we're going to start with the counter force right here, which is uh, 70 kilonewtons in power one. And based on this, we can see that we can actually uh, solve more because this is the power of the ABC. And we need the power of AB. So 70 kilos is what we're going to use now the point. So we know R is equal to P divided by sigma pi. So we're plugging the P. 70 times 10 to the 3 newtons divided by 140. Like right Pascal here. So 140 times 10 to the 6 Pascal times pi. And after solving this, we'll get 0 0.012616 meters. And the diameter just times by 2 is 0 0.025231 meters. Uh, in other words, that's 25.2 meter meters. Uh, so that solves the problem 2. If you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comment sections. And thank you for watching the video. Are you guys, now welcome to problem 3. So, knowing that the central portion of link BD has a uniform cross sectional area of 800 meter meters square, and we want to determine the value of the P for which the normal stress in link BD is 50 mega -hopper. So, here we get the figures. And I'm just going to do right now, given. So, given that the A is 800 meter meters square, and we also given that the magnitude of the P normal stress of sigma is 50 mega -hopper, which is 50 e to the Six. So, based on this, the formula we have, which is sigma, is equal to P divided by A, which I already get P now. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. 50 e to the 6 Pascal is equal to P down here divided by area. Now, for area, we want the area to be in uh, meter square. So, to do this, we're going to convert that to meter square. So, it's 800 e to the 6 meter square. And solve for P. We got four with four zeros, newtons, in other words, 40 kilonewtons. Now, what's 40 kilonewtons? Uh, 40 kilonewtons is the force that supports the branch, uh, branch BD. And to first solve these questions, I think we need to draw a uh, body diagram first, and that's what we're going to do right now. So we got a branch right here, that's BD, uh, BC. Now we know for the point on C, we have a CX and CY. We're just going to be doing draw directions right now, the CY and the CX. But I'm copying something. It's not really matter at this point. And we got the P, which is the uh, force that supports VD right here. So we're going to make up supports VD. And we got uh, 135 for this area right here. So that's uh, 35 millimeters. And we got low P that's down right here. And we know the distance between this and to here is 450 millimeters. Now this is all P. When it comes to statics, all we can do is take moments, right? And what we're going to do right now is take moment at point C. So, moment, sum of moment at point C is equal to zero. And what's going to cause motion? 
since the CY and CX both are uh, two sides of C and go through for C. It's not going to break any moments, but force BD and P in this case do. So we're going to take uh, P in this case, P. And since it is a uh, vertical to vertical force, we're going to take the horizontal, which is about 135 meters away from C. But uh, because we want to have the meters right here. So 0.165 meters. And this is causing a counter quantum rotation, therefore it's positive. If you look at the force BD, which we're about to do, since it is causing the clockwise rotation, this force, this moment is negative. So we have negative force BD times by uh, the vertical the opposite over the hypotenuse. This is this the horizontal one, which is uh, by the graph 240, divided by 510. And the vertical distance is 0 0.45 meters equal to 0. Uh, you can also for a uh, sine angle right here, instead of putting this, uh, just now we do it. And after solving this, we got P equals to 62.745 kilonewtons. And that's what we want to solve for, P. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and leave comments if you have any questions. Welcome to this video, and without further ado, let's get into the questions. So, we have two. For the member of uniform rectangular cross section, I'm joined by the simple glue, Scott's wise section, shown, knowing that the maximum allowable moisturizing at this point is 500 kilopascal, determine the lattice speed that can safely be applied and the corresponding shear stress in the glue splice. So here we got our fingers. And before we do, we're going to draw a free body diagram. And get those numbers. There's a 70 degrees. And here's our cut surface. Okay. Just a little bit. Now, the other part of this is 70 degrees here. 20 degrees. Let's go along. This one says we got P, force, V, and based on our angle ratio, this is 70 degrees, and here's the 20 degrees. Because if you draw this, you will figure out all those relationships. So, join for you, what you see here. So, the second step, we need to solve for the cross section layer S. Okay, just turn it to left. Which in this case is this part, and as you can see, the A is equal to length times by the D. Now, how we found the length? To find length, we're going to use the kind of the G's, which in this case, what I mean is sine 70 degrees is equal to offset the we W divided by. So, you know, let's count this to W divided by sine 70 degrees. And since area is length times D, we put the up here, so this becomes the cross section of areas. And by plugging the numbers in, which is 125 times 75 millimeters divided by sine 70 degrees, we get 9,976.67 millimeters squared. By converting this to meter square, it equals to 0 0.009977 meter square. To convert this now, the way to do it is equal six decimal spaces to left. So, after this, what should we do? We should find the force. So, the force in this case, we're going to use the, I'm going to use the 70 degree angles right here, which, as you guys tell, on sign, 70 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is the force, over the hypotenuse, which is P. So, the force is equal to P sine 70 degrees, in this case. Now, you may wonder why we use P, because the mama uses the allowable stress, and this is the formula to conflict stress, which is using the F. Now, if you don't see understand why, I'll go look at the section 1.3 of the book. I'll check out one of the videos that I just go through, section 1.3. So after we find the P, we can uh, finally calculate the stress and determine the largest P, which is the power of the box. So we know that the allowable stress is 500 kilopascal, and that's equal to by our stress formula is equal to P, which is the force, in this case sine P, sine 70 degrees, 